Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to another episode of Walking with Willie. And more importantly, welcome to ancient Rome. We are here at the military amphitheater out in District 3, AKA Obuda, or as it was known in the days of the Roman Empire, Aquincum. Now, even before the Romans were here, there were tribes in the region. In particular, whoa, the Aravisci tribe, who named this land Ak Inc, Ample Water. And that is where the Romans got the name Aquincum in the first place. And you can imagine when the Romans, those great lovers of bathhouses, came to this Budapestian soil and discovered that there was a delightful assortment of mineralic sulfuric thermal water beneath the ground, how excited they must have been. Fare thee well, civilian amphitheater. Fare thee well. That is just one of two amphitheaters that we will see today. There's so many emperors that we can talk about when it comes to ancient Rome and the span of time that they held Budapest. Pretty much if we want to talk timeline, we're talking from the Emperor Augustus in the year zero until the city was handed over to Attila and his Huns in around the year 422. So that's a swath of four centuries and it would take, I don't know, 30 episodes of Walking with Willie to cover the whole thing. So we're just going to focus in on two guys in particular, Emperor Hadrian and Emperor Marcus Aurelius. Oh, there's Chepel Bikes. Chepel Islands, an island in the outskirts of Budapest, and Chepel Bikes, one of the best bike companies that you got in Hungary. Yes, fly, little magpie, fly. Here we have the communist era Panalhas. This right here is the longest apartment building, I believe, in all of Europe. You can see just how far down it goes. It's incredible. All one apartment building. Marcus Aurelius was a philosopher king. Maybe I can put it. <laughs> Marcus Aurelius wrote one of the most famous Stoic texts, the Meditations. And the Meditations were the ultimate Stoic test because he didn't even write them to be published. He wrote them just for himself. And Aurelius wrote some of his Meditations while he was in Aquincum. For Aquincum was used as a base for the Marcomannic Wars. And the Marcomannic Wars were a vicious series of wars where Rome, as it so often was, ended up triumphant. But it was during this time of great instability and bloodshed, just in the wake and the tail end of the Antonine Plague, which makes coronavirus look like an ice cream sundae, that Aurelius wrote his stoic meditations. Wow, look at these interesting four-story panel houses. You know, it's interesting when you see these four-story ones, the reason that they're only four stories is because anything below five stories in the Soviet Union did not have to have an elevator. <laughs> Bloody cheapskates. Hadrian is integral to the history of Aquincum, just as Aquincum is integral to the history of Hadrian. For Hadrian was first stationed here in the 90s when he was a young strapping soldier earning his stripes and he was put into Legio II Aduitrix. They went all around the world until finally setting up their garrison formally in Aquincum under Emperor Domitian during the time of the First Dacian War. And the best part about Legio II Aduitrix is that their sigil was a Pegasus. Imagine that. Pegasus. Imagine that. A Pegasus. Which nobody could deny. Which nobody could deny. The Legio II Aduitrix. The Legio II Aduitrix. The Legio II Aduitrix which nobody could deny. Eilel me, sir. It's like a grocery store. Uh, Serenek uh, Edshot? Yes. Uh, Borsholi? Yes. Do you want to ask me what to do? 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 What Hadrian was a boss. He was named the first proconsul of the newly minted provincial capital of Aquincum. And he soon got to work building a governor's palace on Obuda Seaget, the Hayo Yari Seaget, the shipyard island today. It's where the Seaget festival takes place. But back in Hadrian's time, he was just lounging there, taking his baths, 
erecting his governor's palace and just being an overall good bloke. Because that's the kind of guy that Hadrian was. He put the wall across the United Kingdom, Hadrian's wall. He did so many things. The guy was a man of the world. Hadrian was a man of the world, a man of the people, a man of the world. I aspire to be just like Hadrian. Romániából Kolozsváról vagyok. Ah, Kolozsvár. Tudom Kolozsvár. Ah, nagy egyetemi centrum. Ebbe, nagyon Ebbe. szép, nagyon Ebbe. szép. Szép napot. Oh, wow, look at these. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful ruins. Amazing. This used to be the site of an old bathhouse. And the baths, as we mentioned at the beginning, were an integral part of the Roman presence in Budapest. All right, check out these two friendly Fairfi right over here in the green shirts. I would have missed the rest of the ruins entirely if not for their wise counsel. You want to put? Check videos of Florian Ter and Romash Rome, Rome, Rome. Same the pot. Imagine another look. Ah, that's it. That's what I'm saying. Look at this. We have some texts from Hadrian himself. Oh yes, this is positively tremendous. Look at this here. Wow, so much ancient Roman history. This is where the good stuff is. Look at this, look at this, look at this. They've done such a nice job of integrating the Roman ruins into the modern day metro station. Incredible. Look at these ancient Roman Beautiful, beautiful ruins that are preserved so well. Love to see it. Oh, save no port. Imagine a look. Lovely Hungarians. Oh man, this is what we're talking about. Beautiful, beautiful old Roman ruins. I wonder what the Romans would make of this to see all the renovation and progress. Would they be happy? Would they be confused? Would they be a mix? Probably a mix. Look above here, we can see all the old bathhouses. Modern bike, old bathhouses. This is where the entrance must have been. You can imagine Marcus Aurelius coming into Soak just before he wrote some of his stoic texts. Oh, tremendous. And there goes a modern scooter. Modern scooter, old bath. <laughs> look at these old Romans. He's a little bit bashful. Don't look. Here they are, Hadrian and Boss. Marcus Aurelius, Mbas. Oh yes, lovely emperors. Save the pot. Uh huh. Again, uh, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Can I believe? Uh huh. Of course. Oh hello, YouTube. Hoi Chivnak. Yangos Jot. Jot. Cheers for Hungary. Majorosak, Elek Budapest and Kate Eve. America va joke. What's your YouTube channel? I check the video. Uh, walking with Willy. Sheta Lunk Willy Bell. They're walking with Willy. And look here on the side of the O Buddha panel houses. History, just bursting at the seams. Oh, this looks like a sick pub. Shirizu Kavezo Arkad. Look at this. Wow, are they open? Nem, Nem Nitva. Oh, <laughs> look at these guys. We're gonna have to come back here. Once football gets going again, that place is gonna be popping. I love these train station coach Let's get a quick beer. És Magyar Elvis. Jó, hogy macska Jancsi volt. 5 millióért vett ruhát. Igen, talán. Talán. Nem talán, tényleg, tényleg, tényleg. Finally, here we are in Aquincon. This is the civilian side of the city. As we mentioned before, you had a military side and a civilian side. I just want to take you guys through the old ruins of Aquinco. This must have housed a plethora of citizens. They say at its peak, Aquincum had 30,000 citizens. And this would have been the beating heartbeat 
of much of the civilization. And it just makes you reflect. I mean, in Aquincum, the Romans were here over 400 years. That's almost twice as long as America has been even a country. It's remarkable to say the least. In the fourth century, the Roman Empire slowly deteriorated everywhere. And this was felt particularly on the frontier regions such as Aquincum. And by the end of the fourth century, you have barely any control over the society. Of course, the civilians of the Roman Empire still lived there. They didn't just get up and leave, but they had very little connection to what was going on in Rome itself. And by the time the beginning of the fifth century rolls around, Attila and his Huns are ransacking the entire society of Rome, particularly in places like Aquincum and Pannonia. And that's when, finally in 422, Roman Budapest came to its untimely end and Attila took over. This is where the gladiators would have entered into the civilian amphitheater here. Slightly smaller than the military amphitheater, 5,000 seater, but still a very sizable amphitheater. Very sizable. Today it's the staging ground of all sorts of mischief. Look at the old grounds of ancient Rome. Beautiful. See ya. Save the pot. You want pot? Serets Magyar Tutanelam? Nem. Yeah, I like it. Igen, igen. <laughs> Super. Good to know you Fucking hell, this phone. Ugh. I can't find Bean. My phone's a potato. I have no service and no way to find them. Bean! Tom! Hey! Amazing. What's up, dude? <laughs> Auto focusing on really. Oh, I can also make it smaller. <laughs> I thank and salute all of you for making it to the end. Ancient Rome, what an ample, ample territory for academic and spiritual exploration. The lessons of our antiquated friends are more prevalent now than ever before. I'll see you next time on Walking with Willie, or as the Hungarians like to say, Shetalunk Willie Bell.